Welcome to part 8 of my inventory tutorial series. So in this part we are going to take a look at how we can craft some different items by using some different materials. So because we need some materials to craft our items, we'll have to add some materials to the game. So throughout this uh, part of the tutorial we'll add an extra box like this green one I have here. And when we enter that box, well, we'll add some different materials to our inventory. So this is only for debugging purposes or gameplay purposes that we have this box that adds the material to the inventory because normally in a game we will have to craft it or mine it by going chopping some wood in the forest or going to some veins or something and, and get some iron or some stone out of them. So I have added three different kinds of materials to the game so far um, and these are the three materials we'll be using throughout this tutorial. You can of course add your own and use your own sprite and so on um, but I have added um, some wood and I have added some stone and then I've added some iron and these are these three kinds of materials I'll be using so to craft our materials we will need to have a crafting bench so I've added some functionality um, that works basically like the chest where you go close to it and you can open it up like this um, so the dark gray box here almost black box over here is actually our crafting bench so if we go close to it and press the E button well then the crafting bench will open up so this crafting bench should work kind of like it does in Minecraft. So these nine slots up, he up here um, is where you have to put the material to craft something. This extra slot down here will show the item that you will be able to craft by placing these uh, objects up here correctly. And the craft button, if you click that, then it will craft the item that is shown here and place it inside your inventory. So if we try to put some iron here and here and we put some wood in the bottom here then you'll see we can actually craft a sword by this so it's an iron sword with um, a wooden handle so you can always mouse over here to see what kind of item you will craft by placing these things up here and if you place them in the wrong pattern for example out here well then you won't be able to craft anything and nothing happens uh, whenever you press the crafting button here so if I put the iron back, then you will see that we have this awesome sword here. And if I click the craft button, then the material is removed from the game. And the sword is, or the item here is crafted. So now we have our awesome sword. And as you can see, we can still equip it and everything and get the stats from it. So now we just crafted our own item to generate some different uh, stats. Um, another thing there's also taken into account if you have too many of one thing let's say we have for example we're using four wood and we're using two iron here and one iron here if you craft it it's only gonna remove the what's it called the materials that it needed to craft the sword so if you have more materials you would be able to put them in and then click more times let's see if we do like this for example we would be able to put these here and these here and then we can click three times to craft craft three swords for example. There you go. And now we don't have any more wood so we can't craft an extra sword here. Besides the sword I have added some functionality to test out the stone uh, material. So basically we can put the stone in here in this shape here and this is also basically taking the shape of Minecraft. If we do like this. Just like that. Then you'll see if we put the stones up here like this then we actually have uh, to, we can craft a strong helmet so this is a helmet made of stone basically um, doesn't make a lot of sense but this is just for testing so if I click the craft button my helmet is crafted and I can of course equip it like uh, anything else as you can see now, now I have a helmet and a sword so you will be able to define what kind of items you can craft in the XML document we made earlier and we'll also have to define of course these um, different materials we should use for the crafting. So that's yeah basically what we need to do throughout this tutorial so let's get started. If you're interested in getting all the assets I've been using in this tutorial series like um, all the scripts with line comments and all the sprites and so on well then you can acquire it throughout the link in the description below. If you already supported me by getting this project, well, then you can simply just reuse your download link to get this part as well. 
if you supported me by being a patron instead of just buying the project, well, then you can just go to the Patreon page and uh, all the um, projects will, of course, also be available to you there. And remember, if you support me as a patron, then every single project that I ever made is available to you on the Patreon page. But you can find out more by following the link in the description. Since the last tutorial, I've gotten a couple of bug reports that uh, we would need to deal with before we can actually start creating our items. So thank you to everyone who wrote me emails about these uh, different bugs so that we can fix them in this tutorial system so that it gets better and better. Um, so the first bug has something to do with the character panel. See If we uh, pick up an item and equip it like this, and I want to pick this one up again, um, there we go. Then you'll see that I, I'm getting a missing component um, exception here because there's no canvas attached to the chart panel. And the reason that I get that um, exception over here in the, in the character panel is because usually we always check if the item or the slot we are clicking, if that slot has a parent with a, um, a canvas group on it, then we can do something in our game. But the problem is that our slots out here doesn't have a parent with a canvas group on it. Because if we click on the head here and click on its parent, which is the chart panel, well, then it doesn't have a canvas group on it because the canvas group is attached to the parent parent, this chart panel holder up here, so that we can make the whole thing go away at once instead of doing it on every single item here. So what we actually have to do is that we have to go to our uh, either we can take the character panel or the char uh, canvas group here and move it to the jar panel or we can simply go to our script and add a couple of lines of code and i think i'm going to add the lines of code so we don't break anything in here because there's a big chance that we're using this some somewhere because the system is getting kind of complex and i can't remember everything that we've done so if we would move it, maybe we're going to uh, break something. So instead, we would have to go to our slot script in here. And inside the slot script start function here, you'll see that we are saying, well, if transfer of the parent is null, so if the slot we are clicking, if or the slot we are creating here um, has parent, well, then we are going to say our canvas group equals transform the parent to get component uh, canvas group. So we're making a reference to the slots parents canvas group. So to make sure that we always set a canvas group no matter how many parents the slot has, well then we need to loop through the parents until we find a, pa a canvas group. So we will say head, then we'll check our character panel for a parent and then we'll hop up, uh, up here and check our char panel for a parent and a canvas group. So we need to change this code a little around. We need to make a reference called transform. And this P is for parent equals transform the parent. So right now we are looking at this slots uh, parent here. Let's see if I can open unit again here. So transform the parent is the char panel. So we're making a reference to the char panel. When we have made that reference, we will make a while loop not a wheel collider, but a while loop. And if the canvas group hasn't been set yet, if that is null, and the P is different from null. So if, if the slot has a parent and it doesn't have a canvas group, well, then we are going to say canvas group equals P that get component canvas group. So then we are going to try to get the canvas group from the parent. So right now we are trying to get a canvas group from the char panel, which it doesn't have. So under here, we are going to say p equals p dot parent. So we just tried to find a canvas group on the char panel, which we don't have, but we are going to change the parent. We are going to look at next time the while loop runs to the char panel holder instead. So what we're going to do, we're going to change this one and this line of code we can actually delete to the char panel holder. So next time this while loop runs, the canvas group is still null because we didn't find the canvas group on, 
on the chart panel we were looking at, and the parent is is um, is is not null because we just set it here, and then we're going to check if the if we can set the canvas group to the p that get component canvas, and we in this case we can because the chart panel holder has a canvas on it, so we're gonna make a reference to that so that we can use that when we click our different slots now. Then we're going to set P to parent, and next time the canvas, uh, the while loop runs, the canvas group is already set to something, so it's going to break the loop and continue in the rest of the code here. So if we save this, and open up here, so let's see if we equip an item, and now we don't get that um, exception anymore because we don't have problems with the uh, we don't have any problems with the items um, not having a canvas group anymore or the slots not having a canvas group so this is just a little fix for using the canvas group because we're using the canvas group when we have uh, when we have to hide the character panel for example and of course we're also using it when we need to check if we can click on the slot to move something around and that's why we got the exception before because all these slots here didn't have a uh, a canvas group attached to them so that we can move our items from one point to another so one more bug we would need to address is the fact that we can actually move around our um, inventory when it's closed, as you can see, I can click here and move my inventory around. And if I place my mouse here where I can move it, and I close my inventory, and I click this button, well, and open it again, then you'll see I was able to move the inventory even though it was closed. So we need to do something so that we can actually not move it whenever it's closed. So we need to go to our inventory script and we need to find the function called move inventory here on drag here and basically we can around this move inventory we can make an if statement so in here we can say if is open then we are going to move the inventory so if we save this and jump back into our game here and we rerun it then we shouldn't be able to move our inventory anymore if I place my mouse here and I click and I try to move it around then I open it up and it's still there at the same spot so another little thing I would like to address we are not able to move our character panel uh, since we did some changes and everything and usually we wouldn't want to move the character panel anyway if, if I put my mouse down here and try to move it you'll see that we get this exception here so maybe we'll deal with this one later um, so that we can move the character panel it's not really important that we can do it but I would like to remove this exception here so we don't have that exception anymore um, because we don't want exceptions in our game so if we click on the character panel here and we look at the event triggers here uh, the drag script here you can click on that and just press the minus button here because we now we won't be able to move it anymore so if we save that and open up the chart panel then we don't get that exception more anymore if we try to hold down the mouse button and move it around so now we shouldn't have any more bugs from the last um, tutorial so we can actually start adding some stuff from the new tutorial so I'm going to wrap this part up now and in the next part we're going to take a look at how we can generate the different materials from our XML documents